equal opportunity. Sundays were special days in the land of opportunity. Sundays were when equal opportunity was met. We'd all seen the videos from the filtration camps, videos of equal opportunities grounds. It's 12 circular barracks spread out clockwise around the central parade ground. Each barracks 10 meters in diameter, each standing equidistant from its adjacent neighbors, each roof bearing flags with Roman numerals, beginning with a blood red one followed by a two, the numeration proceeding clockwise around the perimeter until ending at the 12th building which bore the numeral 12. The blood red numeral flags atop the flagpoles were easily visible from all parts of Opportunity's grounds. Each barrack had a single entry egress door, which was likewise and correspondingly enumerated in blood red. Naturally, each door faced Opportunity. The entrances for the building stood 100 meters from the center of Opportunity's parade ground, and each barracks held four toilets, a centralized bank of showers, and a dining table that accommodated 12 chairs. Along the building's perimeter, 12 spartan but comfortable twin beds circled the main room, each set up with 30 degrees of separation from its neighbor. Additionally, each of the 12 buildings contained 12 approximately equal sized tenants and all 144 within our 12 equal buildings lived in the shadow of opportunity. Equal opportunity consisted of a wooden crow's nest high atop a massive concrete pillar that rose 10 meters above ground. 12 lines attached a meter above opportunity's crow's nest snaked to stakes in the ground 60 meters from the pillar. From a distance, the 12 snaking lines resembled an immobile maypole, each line terminating at the stake, each stake separated by 30 degrees. The enumeration of the stakes with one through 12 in blood red Roman numerals serving as foreboding harbingers of opportunities function. Each week, the entirety of week contestants arrive following the previous week's broadcast, each of us transported from a filtration camp. Upon arrival, we were assigned to buildings based upon our size. I was assigned to Building 7, which housed seven larger females as well as five smaller males. Upon entering our barracks, the females selected seven adjacent beds to the right of the door, while we five males went left. Everyone in camp spent our week training for opportunity, filling our far too long empty bellies and getting to know our barrack mates. Opportunity's gross of contestants fixated on food, limited freedom, and the upcoming challenge. A challenge which promised one winner from each of the 12 barracks freedom. Access to opportunity was continuous but rotated through the 12 barracks in 20 minute rotations. Our midnight arrival at camp put Barrack 7's first rotation at 2 a.m. And after selecting our bunk, all 12 of us availed ourselves of the kitchen, a short sleep, and then our first 20 minutes of hands-on training. Filing out of Barrack 7, a female of roughly my age said to me, will we always have two o'clock training sessions? Yes, I said to her as we dog trotted from our barrack to the enumerated stakes to which the line snaked, but also 6, 10, 14, 18, and 22. It takes four hours to get through all 12 ro rotations. I'm Alexander, by the way. It is a pleasure to meet you, came the young female's rote response. My name is Melania. How long were you held in a filtration camp? She asked as we stopped at stakes 8 and 9. Since May of last year captured in Mariupol during the Russian Victory Day push. May their names and descendants be cursed. And you? Uh, same. I was in Kamiansk. It was horrid. It was. It is. I wish I knew how the water's progressing. What will you do if you regain freedom? Return to Kamiansk, if that is at all reasonable. Otherwise, head somewhere close to Ukraine and wait out Putin's war. That is what I wrote on my application as well, though of course I said the war, not Putin's. The war is a safe thing to say. It is wise to say safe things, Melania replied with a nod. Are you a mathematician? I'm sorry, a, a mathematician? No, why do you ask? 
you so quickly answered my questions concerning our training time. Ah, <laughs> no, I could not fall asleep, and until I figured it out, I may be a bit obsessive compulsive. By the way, do you know what next Sunday is? Melania asked. Our day to compete. Yes, it is that. But it is also Easter. And twelve of us will resurrect, she whispered, her voice breaking. A week of Epicurean abundance unseen by opportunities contestants for nearly a year lifted our bodies, minds, spirits, and libidos. We dozen within barracks seven participated in the preponderance of practice rotations, each of us advancing in our expertise and acumen while also providing coaching tips to help one another advance in our strategies of attack. Concurrently, night noises within our barracks sang from snores to rapturous exultations of ecstasy as Milani and I, along with, with other inhabitants, affirmed Epicure's adage of eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we may die. Our Sunday arrived, and though the entirety of opportunities contestants hoped to be resurrected from the growing nearer and near certainty that death awaited, all likewise knew that regardless of our faith or beliefs, that in an afterlife that our odds of our rebirth stood at 8%. Capture and detentions within the filtration camps meant that every contestant had been subjected to an endless stream of Russian television. And every Sunday at noon, GMT plus three, every filtration camp blared equal opportunity over their televisions. All of opportunities contestants had viewed the narrations of Rasputin from within our camps and all knew that every filtration camp blared only equal opportunity on Sundays from 14 through 16 o'clock that no other show came close to pulling in the ratings of Rasputin as he stood high atop opportunities pillar, circling its crow's nest, describing, herring, vilifying, and heckling equal opportunities contestants in our scrambles. Gales that accompanied opportunities May 16th telecast simultaneously swept Rasputin's long, greasy hair and food-speckled beard in all directions, his strands seemingly fighting for freedom as they flew and flapped like the 12 flags perched above the barracks in defiance of body oil that typically held them captive against Rasputin's pockmarked face. Rasputin began, as always, welcoming his viewers and singing praise for equal opportunity, the video feed filling the screen with a close-up of him high atop the 10-millimeter pillar hands grasping the railing of opportunity's circular crow's nest. Pupils dilated to a near-black expanse centered within white, despite the sun shining brightly through feathery wisps of cirrus clouds. Welcome, Tarvaski! Welcome, Rasputin! Welcomes you to another Sunday of opportunity! Today, twelve fortunate souls will grasp opportunity and advance to freedom! His declaration eliciting a massive scream from we, 144 mats below, as the camera swept over opportunity's parade ground. Today we shall again see him in our Colosseum, and our gross will not disappoint, Rasputin continued, the camera once again on him. You know the rules. They know the rules. Each rotunda receives nine minutes in its battle for freedom. Today, twelve winners from twelve meets will grab opportunity. Today, twelve fortunate souls will do what each of us is capable grasping opportunity, and advancing in life. As Rasputin continued, the camera shifted to ground level. The comrades from Rotunda 1 have done their harnesses and been given access to opportunity, the view shifting to 12 paired attendants attaching 12 guy wires to opportunity seekers, each guy wire snaking from high atop opportunity to the stake 60 meters from center. The harness providing maximum freedom of movement while simultaneously assuring that once attached to opportunity, each participant would remain firmly attached until freed. 
Each comrade has full freedom of movement within the limits of the tethers, and each knows that the first to scale the top of opportunity is gifted with freedom. Freedom! Freedom is earned by grasping opportunity by the balls and holding on with all their might. Twelve rounds, ten total minutes per round, twelve winners, and all a comrade needs to win is what? Rasputin demanded. To grasp opportunity, scream we, 144 a mass below the camera sweeping over us. Da! Opportunity shall be grasped by whoever avoids my snares, whoever is swiftest, most agile, most cunning. There lies freedom. Let us begin. Brex One was off and scrambling as we proceeded in a clockwise rotation, each of us from the remaining barracks watching from just outside our eleven doors as the dozen of barracks One members scrambled upwards, dodging the projectiles Rasputin shot towards them. Melania reached over and took my hand. I hope if I fail, you succeed, she whispered, leaning her head against my shoulder. Yes, I whispered back, returning her hand's pressure. I was going to say that very thing. Simultaneously to the first of Barrack One's contestants dying from a Rasputin-thrown spear.